Welcome to the Cheating Secrets channel. In my childhood, I didn't have many close friends, just acquaintances for fishing or sports. It wasn't until university that I made real friends. Grant and I bonded over rugby, not academics. He played as a lock, and I was a flanker. Our friendship started during a game that escalated into a fight when I stepped in to defend him. Afterward, we got drunk and wrote ourselves off, marking the beginning of a close friendship. After university, I took a job in Wellington as a civil servant, while Grant went to South Africa, making a breakthrough in diamond mining. We were opposites, he was ambitious, while I was more laid back. I met Ashley, my future wife, at a rugby club award ceremony, and we quickly got married. We settled in Lyle Bay, where our children, Sylvia and Clive, were born. Grant returned from South Africa with his fiancée, Saskia. While they searched for a home, they stayed with us, and Saskia and Ashley became close friends. Grant bought an engineering business and turned it into a success. When we decided to add an extension to our house, Grant eagerly helped, and we worked together, strengthening our friendship. Grant eventually sold his business and returned to mining in Australia, which strained his marriage. Saskia spent a lot of time at our house, upset over his long absences. When he finally returned, he surprised everyone by wanting to become a winemaker. He convinced Saskia, and they moved to central Otago to start a vineyard, despite the region's lack of winemaking history. Grant invited me to help with the construction of his house. After a family discussion, we packed up for a six-week holiday to help him build. It was hard work but also fun. Over the next year, I returned several times to assist, and in the end, Grant built a massive, impressive house that stood out in the area. Large stone columns in the front and oversized doors led into a wide foyer, it could easily have been a house from a Hollywood movie. Grant's plan wasn't just to create a successful vineyard, he wanted a family home where guests could stay, tour the vineyards, and experience winemaking. For a couple of years, we lost touch while he built his business. We were busy raising our kids, and Ashley went back to work. We reconnected when our daughter Sylvia left for university, with Saskia helping take care of her. At my 50th birthday, Grant and Saskia visited, and we started spending more time together. Saskia loved driving her Triumph Spitfire recklessly. Sadly, one day, while speeding on country roads, she had a fatal accident. Grant was devastated when he called us with the news. We flew to him immediately. Ashley tried to comfort him, while I sat with him, getting drunk. The next day, Ashley managed everything for the flood of visitors offering condolences. After the funeral, Grant became withdrawn. We convinced him to stay with us in Wellington. He was a shadow of himself, and as much as we loved him, it became exhausting to take care of him. Finally, one day, he decided to go back to the vineyard, saying, if I stay any longer, I'll go crazy. We were relieved when he left. A month later, we visited him. His house was a mess, and Ashley and I cleaned while Grant disappeared, busy with vineyard work. He seemed distant, and Ashley worried. Eventually, we found out he had been diagnosed with a brain tumor and only had six months to live. He refused to stay with us, determined to finish the vineyard. We visited again, trying to convince him to return with us, but he refused. Ashley was heartbroken, saying, he needs help. At dinner that night, we unsuccessfully tried to convince him to come back home with us, but he refused, and no amount of persuasion or arguing could change his mind. The next day, I went on a tour of the vineyard with Grant as he pointed out all the improvements and changes. I had a moment to speak with his foreman, and it was clear that he was the one running everything and managing the place, while Grant, despite his good intentions, was just getting in the way. The flight home was quiet, except for Ashley saying, Darling, we can't just leave him like this. He can't take care of himself, and he's going to harm himself. Well, he seems to be managing. There's nothing we can do unless we can prove he's not in his right mind. But he's not crazy, he. Darling, he needs help. 
I was puzzled by where this was going. Sweetheart, it's his life. We just have to be there for him when he needs us. That's nonsense, she snapped angrily. He needs us now. I don't understand you. He's your best friend, for God's sake. He needs you, and we need to find a way to help. She leaned back in her seat and crossed her arms tightly over her chest, just like she always did when she was angry. From experience, I knew it was best not to say anything in such situations. On Tuesday evening, I came home to find that Ashley had prepared a large dinner, and that night we made passionate love, after which she pressed her warm body tightly against mine. Wednesday night was a repeat, except this time we made love twice, and afterward, she was very tender. Thursday evening, another session. Damn, three nights in a row, it had been a long time since we were this in love. On Friday night, there was yet another big dinner, and in bed, Ashley exhausted both of us with her passion, and only after we embraced did I get the shock. Rob, I want us to take some time off and stay with Grant to help him. Damn, he only has a few months left. I talked to my management, and they agreed to give me six months off. I don't have that many vacation days, so I'll have to take one month unpaid. Stunned and confused, I asked, what? God, Ashley, was all the sex because of this? She smirked with a wicked little smile. Shouldn't I have done that? Rob, he's our best friend, and you've seen how he is. He can't take care of himself, and he has no one else to lean on. Darling, it's the right thing to do, we have to help. She pressed closer to me. Come on, my love, you know it's the right thing. You've got a long vacation, and we can do this. Ashley, there are government agencies and services for this. If they can't help, I'm sure he could afford a 24-hour caregiver. Let me talk to him a bit, and I'm sure we can figure something out. Shaking her head, she kissed my bare shoulder. Come on, that wouldn't be right, would it? I don't want some stranger taking care of him when we can do it ourselves. What would Saskia say? No, Rob, this is our responsibility. Ash, I can't. We have too much going on at work. They're prepping me for a promotion, and if I leave now, I'll get fired. Oh, for God's sake, we don't need the money. We're talking about our friend. Darling, he's not expecting that from us. He's tough, when he gets to the point where he can't take care of himself, then we can start worrying. She shook her head, and it was clear she was angry. Damn it, you're frustrating me. What happened to the caring, loving guy I married? Where did this cold, heartless version I'm living with come from? I understand you want to help, Ash, but we just can't. The next few days were a bit frosty, but by the third day, the passionate sex returned with double the intensity, and as the weekend approached, I was already feeling exhausted. On Friday night, everything came to light. After we made love and cuddled in post coital bliss, she confronted me. Darling, I've decided that if you're not going to help, I'll go on my own. Ash, you can't. I need you here too, you know that. Damn it, you're a big boy, you can take care of yourself. He's dying, for God's sake, he's going to be gone soon. Realizing I was fighting a losing battle and acknowledging that she was right, I asked, so how long are we talking, days or weeks? She wrapped her arms around my neck and kissed me on the lips. Well, I don't know how quickly he'll start to lose control or how long it'll take before he can't stay home alone, but I'll stay until they take him to the hospital. God, Ashley, you know this could take months. She nodded, I know, darling, but what else can I do? Leaning back, I whispered, damn, Ashley, I don't know. How long until you come home? Until the end, I think. So, you're not even going to come home for visits? The sad look in her eyes gave me the answer. Rob, you can come every weekend or maybe every other weekend. You don't have to leave it all to me. The next morning, we made love again before I drove her to the airport. Call me, I whispered as we hugged one last time. 
She kissed me gently, of course, silly, every night. And with that, she was gone. At home, I wandered around feeling lost. No matter how much I groaned about it, this would be the first time in our married life that we'd ever been apart. I mowed the lawns and thought about what to have for dinner. Well, one good thing, at least I could have whatever I wanted. I opened a beer and relaxed in the living room. Later that evening, Ashley called, and Grant was crying on the phone. Thank you, buddy, damn, this means so much to me. Ashley took the phone again and whispered, Rob, he was so happy when he saw me, it was like he instantly brightened up. We did the right thing, he's more alive now than I've seen him in a long time. During the first week, the calls were regular, and she begged me to come for the weekend, but with my work, I couldn't make it, I had to work on Saturday too. The following week, she called every night but no longer begged me to visit. The week after that, the calls became less frequent and felt forced, as if she was afraid to talk to me, and I sensed that something was off. By the end of the fourth week, I decided I needed to figure out what the hell was going on. I booked a flight for the weekend without saying anything, planning to surprise them. As I approached Grant's house, it was a pleasant day in central Otago. All I hoped for was that his condition hadn't worsened too much and that Ashley was doing okay. When I pulled up in front of the house, I was struck by how well everything looked, the gardens were tidy, the lawns were trimmed, and the estate looked neat. Clearly, Ashley had been very busy. I walked in, loudly calling out. Ashley, are you here? She came out of the kitchen, looking completely stunned. Rob. What are you doing here? Surprised by her indifference, I mumbled, Jesus. Do I need an excuse to visit my wife? She hesitantly approached, hugging me, and her kiss melted away all my fears. No, of course not, you sneaky devil, but you should have called. We could have picked you up from the airport and saved on the car rental. Grant came in from outside, and his expression surprised me, he wasn't thrilled to see me, though he looked well, really well. Hey, buddy, he said, extending his hand. I brushed his hand aside, and we hugged the way only close male friends can. Damn, you look good, I muttered. Must be the good food, he laughed. Ash muttered, I'll make some tea. I grabbed my bag and headed to the hallway. I need to change. I guess we're staying in the main guest room as usual. Ashley and Grant exchanged a strange look as I made my way down the hall to the guest room, which was empty, no clothes, no bags, nothing. It hadn't been used for a long time. I turned and looked toward the living room where Ashley and Grant stood side by side, watching me. I went back into the room, leaving my bag in the doorway, and walked into the master bedroom, where all of Ashley's clothes were, her bags, open and empty, her shoes scattered around just like she did at home. The bed was completely unmade, which was very unlike Ashley unless it had been used very recently, when I turned to leave, Ashley was standing there, staring at me. Darling, let me explain. Let's put your bag in the guest room, and we can all sit down and talk. She looked nervous, agitated, and possibly even scared. I felt weak, my heart was pounding in my chest, and my breathing suddenly became labored. I walked past her, pushing her aside, grabbed my bag, and headed for the door, while Ashley ran after me. Rob, please, let me explain. Please, darling, stop. Rob, you have to let me say something. I kept walking straight through the living room and back to my car. Ashley shouted, Rob, please, wait. Don't walk away. Please stop, let's talk, she yelled angrily. Rob, listen to me, please. For God's sake, let me explain. Grant approached. Buddy, let's not do anything rash. I swung wildly and landed a punch. In our younger days, he would have beaten me half to death, but my punch landed squarely on his nose, and he staggered, flailing his arms, trying to regain his balance. Thud, and he was on the ground, groaning. Ashley looked at me, then at him, before leaning down to check if he was okay. 
By that time, I had thrown my bag onto the back seat and got in, slamming the door angrily. Ashley ran over and grabbed me. Rob, please, don't leave like this. Let's go back inside and talk. I spat back angrily, and where am I supposed to sleep? More to the point, where are you sleeping? She winced in pain. With you, silly. You're my husband. Does it look like that right now? I started the car, shifting gears with a crunch. It seems to me that your husband is him now. Before driving off, I hissed, Ashley, I'm giving you a chance. If you're home in Wellington by Monday, I'll try to forget this madness ever happened. But if you're not there, I promise you right here and now, our marriage is over, and you can stay here as long as you like. I sped off, kicking up stones behind me as I accelerated, silently cursing. For God's sake, they were living like husband and wife, sharing a bed, and obviously having sex. When I got to the airport, it cost me a fortune to change my ticket. Once I got home, the reality of the situation hit me. My parting shot had been the offer to forgive her, but as I sat in the living room, staring blankly into space, I wondered, if she did come back, could I actually forgive her? On Sunday afternoon, Ashley called me, Rob, can we take a breath and talk? Please, give me a chance to explain what happened. Go ahead, explain. Tell me why my wife is having sex with another man. Tell me why you're living with him like husband and wife while I'm here alone. Darling, it's not like that. I cut her off before she could continue. Oh, it's not. You're not sharing a bed. There was a pregnant pause. Yes, we're sharing a bed, but it's not what you think. You're not having sex. Silence returned, and we listened to each other's breathing before she rasped softly, yes, we're having sex, but... I interrupted again, then it's exactly what I thought, you're living together. Rob, please let me explain. He was so lonely and so sad. You know how much he loved Saskia. I didn't come here for this, it just happened. It all started with a comforting kiss, and then it spiraled out of control. You can say that all you want. I made you an offer, and it still stands. If you're home tomorrow, I'm willing to try to forgive you. I heard her sigh. Thank you, Rob, that's why I love you, but I can't, not right now. You've seen how much better he is now that he has some small happiness in his life. I can't just leave him. Damn it, my love, he doesn't have long to live, and then I'll come home, and we can put all of this behind us. I think you misunderstood me. This is the only offer, Ashley. I'm not going to wait. Either you're here tomorrow, or I'm filing for divorce, that's it. She started sobbing. Rob, he has no one, we're all he has. You're wrong. All he has is you. To me, he's already dead. You don't mean that, she snapped. He's your best friend, you wouldn't abandon him when he needs you. Ashley, listen to me, he's already dead to me. If you're not home tomorrow, I'll file for divorce. This isn't a threat, it's a promise. And what, our marriage means less to you than this. Everything we've been through. You're just going to throw away 25 years. No, not me, Ashley. That's on you, not me. If this is how it ends, it'll be your burden to carry, not mine. All I could hear were her sobs. What were you thinking, Ashley? Jesus, what the hell were you thinking? She broke down in hysterics. I don't know, Rob, I just wanted to make his last days happy. I just wanted to bring him some joy in his final days. Come home, and we can try to get through this. I promise I'll try to forgive. I'm sorry, Rob, but I can't do that. I hope you can forgive me, because I love you and can't imagine my life without you. Well, you'd better get used to it, because if you're not here tomorrow, we're definitely done. The next few days passed slowly. Work was impossible, I was wasting time, but I fought through it, sitting at home would have been worse. 
At night, the house felt cold, and my life felt empty. Ashley called a few times, and once she handed the phone to Grant, but the moment I heard his voice, I hung up. My daughter called to tell me how proud she was of her mom and that it was a selfless act to go and take care of him. God, she compared her to Mother Teresa or damn Florence Nightingale. I couldn't bring myself to tell her the truth, but she couldn't understand when I told her to shut up because I didn't want to hear it. But that wasn't the only thing she wanted to tell me. She had another surprise, she was engaged and wanted to know if we could make it to her party, which would be in a month. Of course, I agreed and offered to pay, which made her very happy. What didn't make her happy was when she asked what I thought about holding her engagement party at Grant's Vineyard. Her damn mother must have already spoken to her and made the suggestion, which I immediately rejected. Sylvie, the answer is, no, I'll find somewhere better. She seemed confused. Why, Dad? What could be better? It would be perfect. My anger caused me to snap, Sylvie, if you hold it there, I won't be involved, and I won't be paying for it. She seemed surprised. But it was Mom's idea. She said Uncle Grant could be there. Do what you want, Sylvie, but if you plan it there, you'll be doing it without me. There was a pause as she tried to gather her thoughts. She fell silent, saying she would talk to her mom and call me back. Sure enough, less than an hour later, Ashley called. Darling, Sylvie just told me something silly about you not wanting to have the engagement party here. That's right, I spat back. She sighed. Darling, please don't be so difficult. It makes sense to have the party here. Grant is getting worse, and he won't be able to travel. Please, I'm begging you, don't make this harder than it has to be. What the hell, Ashley? I stand by my decision. If she wants to listen to you, I won't be there, and I won't pay for it. Darling, Grant has already offered to pay as his gift, if we have it here, it won't cost a cent. Sorry, but if you want me to be there, he won't be, and he won't be paying for my daughter's engagement party. Tell him to get lost. Thankfully, after many phone calls, my daughter realized something was going on and reluctantly agreed to have the party elsewhere. Through an old rugby contact, I managed to find a venue in Hanmer Springs. Sylvie was just as happy as I was when I told her the news. It will be expensive, but I didn't care that IT was also the push I needed to start the divorce process. Two weeks later, the divorce papers were finalized and filed with the court. They were then waiting for Ashley's response, as the papers had been sent to her by registered mail. If she didn't contest it, all she needed to do was sign and return them, and the documents would be submitted to the court. What the hell? That's all I heard when I picked up the phone. Hello, Ashley, nice to hear your voice. Rob, what the hell is going on? It's simple, Ashley, I assume you're talking about the divorce. If you sign the papers and send them back, we can file for divorce, and it'll be finalized in six months. Rob, no. Do I have to beg? Please don't do this, we can work through this once I come home. You'll see that all of this is nonsense. Oh, for God's sake, Ashley, don't be ridiculous. I'm not going to wait while you play house with that idiot. All I want is for you to sign the papers so we can both move on. No, I refuse. I don't want this, and I won't sign. Darling, take your time. Sylvie's engagement party is in six weeks, can't we at least wait until then? No, I won't wait. Everything has been filed with the court, and whether you contest it or not, we will be legally separated. You can fight the divorce, but when the judge finds out you've been living with another man for three months, I don't think you'll have much of a chance. I'm not living with him, I'm taking care of a dying friend. Nursing doesn't require sharing a bed or having sex. God, you can be a nasty bastard when you want to be. I spent most of my free time helping plan Sylvie's engagement, and everything was going well until she sent me the guest list, which included Grant's name, that led to another unpleasant call when I informed her that he wasn't welcome. She cried when I laid out my rules. And yes, 
that led to yet another unpleasant call between Ashley and me. She accused me of being cruel, reminding me that Grant was Sylvie's godfather and had a right to be there. That was the last straw for me, and I snarled, no, as long as he's sleeping with you, he's not welcome here. The engagement party was a big success for everyone except Ashley, she came, but alone. For most of the evening, we sat at opposite ends of the table. When the party really got going and the band started playing, Sylvie nudged me. Dad, I don't know what's going on between you and Mom, but tonight you need to set it aside. I'm begging you, don't ruin my party. I hugged her and kissed her, all right, sweetheart, I'll behave. Good, then go dance with Mom. She looks like she's carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders. She said poor old Uncle Grant is very sick. As she pushed me, I walked across the room, feeling like a thousand eyes were on me. I held out my hand and led her to the dance floor. As we glided serenely across the floor, she melted in my arms. Oh God, Rob, it feels so good to be in your arms. Thank you for asking me to dance. Okay. How are things? I asked. Fine, I guess, but Grant. I cut her off. I don't want to hear about him, and I don't even want to hear his name. She tensed at my angry response, but as we glided across the floor, she pressed closer to me, and we continued dancing in silence. After a few songs, she sighed. Rob, I want to talk to you. We need to clear things up. Not tonight. Sylvie already growled at me. If you're still here tomorrow, maybe we can find a quiet place to talk. She agreed. God, it felt so good to hold her in my arms, it just felt right. Where are you staying for the night, she asked. I glanced at her quickly. At the Royal, in town. I could come and spend the night with you, she whispered, her teeth gently grazing my ear. No, thank you, Ashley. I don't sleep with other men's wives. Rob, please, don't start. Is it so wrong to spend the night together? I love you, and I want you. What's the matter, is Grant so sick that he can't reach his climax? She pushed me away. You're a disgusting bastard. I just wanted to spend some time with you, but if you must know, Grant only has a few weeks left. Tell me where he'll be buried so I can come and piss on his grave. The cold, furious look she gave me could have frozen the fires of hell. As promised, we met at the pub the next day. I had already ordered her a glass of wine by the time she walked in. I didn't stand when she approached the table. What do you want to talk about, Ashley? As I mentioned last night, Grant won't be around in a week or two. I wanted to ask if you would come and visit him. He wants to talk to you. Oh yeah. And which bedroom will I be staying in? Rob, please, come. It's important. You were his best friend. No, Ashley, he lost that right the night he got into bed with you. He's not my friend anymore, and no, I won't see him. You can tell him I hope his death is slow and painful to make up for the pain I've felt over the past six months. A gloomy expression spread across her face. Please, Rob, just give him a chance. He needs to talk to you. Well, I don't want to hear anything from him. Now, let's move on to something important. I want to put the house up for sale, we both need to find somewhere to live. Darling, that's part of what Grant wants to talk to you about. Please come and spend a few days at the vineyard and hear what he has to say. All I want is your agreement to sell the house. If you think you can buy out my share, we can settle, but if you can't come up with the money, we need to sell. I've already had an agent appraise it, and they're ready to put it on the market. Rob, we don't have to do this. At least give me a chance to make things right, give me the opportunity to change your mind. We can't do that if we're living apart. Sorry, Ashley, but I gave you a chance, and you turned your back on it. You know I couldn't leave him like that, darling. He had a smile on his face, enjoying his final days, and he'll be gone soon. 
Just give us a chance. Let me try. If I can't change your mind, or if you find you can't forgive me, at least we can say we tried. But it seems like you've already given up on me. Clenching my teeth, I muttered, should I sell the house, or do you want to keep it for yourself? Irritated, she slammed her hands on the table, drawing startled looks from across the room. Sell the damn thing. If you're so ready to end everything, then sell it. I nodded. Fine, I'll tell the agents we're working with and send you the paperwork. As the tears started to fall, she sniffled, do you still love me? Our marriage was so beautiful, and I never doubted your love. Even through all of this, I always thought you still loved me. I love you, and I probably always will, but you chose to give that love to another man. I'm sorry, Ashley, but it's up to you. Why can't we fight for our marriage? If you love me like you say, why can't we at least try? Her hand squeezed mine tighter. Please, Rob, think about the kids, what will they say, what will we tell them? I don't know about you, but I'll tell them the truth. She dropped my hand like a hot potato. No, Rob, please don't do that. They'll hate me. I'm not going to lie for you, Ashley. You dug this hole, and now you're in it. I was surprised at how quickly the house sold, but I got another shock. Clive came to help me move into the new house, and he surprised me by bringing his girlfriend, Alicia, a very pretty young woman. We had a great weekend, swimming and barbecuing. I was truly amazed by his choice of girlfriend. Unlike some of the stuck-up girls he used to hang out with, she was very sweet, intelligent, and we had some really nice conversations. In my situation, there are two ways you can go, complain about life and become bitter and resentful, or keep moving forward. I chose the latter, focusing on living a good life. Working from a spare bedroom, I started building my business as a consulting engineer. Finding work was fairly easy, I wasn't the only government-employed engineer who had been let go, and that created a gap I was happy to fill at more than double my previous salary. Within a month, I had more work than I could handle. Life began to feel lighter, and the overwhelming anger faded away that a persistent knock on the front door pulled me away from the rugby game I was watching on TV. When I opened it, there stood Ashley, looking more radiant and beautiful than I remembered. Can I come in? She asked that I opened the door wider. I was drinking a beer and watching the game, with sandwiches for dinner. What do you want, Ashley? I want to talk, to see if we can get past all the anger and bitterness. Rob, I still love you and want to be in your life. Looking into her deep green eyes, all I could see was pain. I don't think so, Ash. I gave you a chance for redemption once, and you turned me down. What was I supposed to do? He was dying, our best friend in the world was dying. I thought that once you calmed down, you'd see that it was nothing, that we could get through it. God, if you had stayed there with me from the start, like I asked, none of this would have happened. Yes, and if you had stayed with me, like I asked, none of this would have happened either. She sighed. Rob, he was our friend. That just makes it worse. Why can't you understand that? For God's sake, how would you feel if I ran off with your sister and had a six-month affair with her? How would you take that? Darling, I know it was wrong, I'm not defending myself that I see the pain in your eyes, I hurt you, and I'm sorry. But we could put it all behind us, we could go back to the way things were. Just give me a chance, and I'll prove it to you, I'll do anything to make it right. Tears rolled down her beautiful cheeks, and I took a tissue and wiped her eyes. Ash, I'm not sure I can do that. I'm only just starting to get my life back in order. We should just keep moving forward. No, please, let me show you what you could lose. We could try again and see if we can make it work. And if not, what do we have to lose? Leaning back on the couch, I sighed. Ash, I can't do it. I really can't. She pounced on me like a tiger on a wounded gazelle, her arms wrapping around my neck, and her lips locked onto mine in a deep, passionate kiss. It was wild and passionate, and it was over in just a few short minutes. 
All my arguments disappeared, and we lay side by side, her head resting on my shoulder. See, darling, we can do this. I'll make you forget. I asked hesitantly, okay, and how do you think this is going to work? Propping herself up on her elbow, she smiled. My love, this is what Grant wanted to talk to you about before he died. He wanted you to take the vineyard for yourself. God, you helped him build it, and you love it. Wouldn't that be perfect? I was stunned by her remark and by how she brought up his name. No, actually, that would be far from perfect. Grant is dead and buried, and that's exactly how I like it. I told you I would never set foot on that place again, and I damn well meant it. If you're being honest, then this is what our life will be. I've started building a really good client base, and my consulting business is doing very well. I'm willing to give it a try, but I'm making no promises. She rolled onto her back, staring at the ceiling. My love, it was his dying wish for you to take it all over. It was supposed to be his gift to us. The answer is, no, I don't want his money or his house. I could hear her sobbing as she tried to hold back her tears. You're not even going to think about it, are you? No chance, Ash. If you're serious about trying again, I'm willing, but it will be a fresh start, a new home, new friends, and new jobs. Morning came too quickly, I liked having her warm body pressed against mine. When I opened my eyes, she was already awake but just lying there, staring at the ceiling. I looked at her and asked, so, what have we decided? She nodded slowly. Rob, I want this more than anything. I want us to be husband and wife again, and if that means living here, then that's what we'll do. We sealed it with a kiss. I threw off the blankets. Good, let's go for a walk on the beach. It was a beautiful, bright sunny morning, and we walked alone on the beach, with the gentle waves crashing against the shore serenading us, the weekend flew by in an instant. Ashley flew back to Otago to collect her things, and I returned to work. She came back on Wednesday with much less luggage than I had expected. It wasn't easy, it was tense, and we were living on edge, both of us being careful with our words. Although Ashley was living with me, she was still deeply involved in helping manage the vineyard. Glenn didn't want anything to do with it. He was happy when his father left half of it to Ashley, it meant he could continue his studies, leaving everything in her hands. It sounds simple, but it infuriated me. I was tired of hearing her phone calls giving instructions about various aspects of managing the vineyard. I could see that her roots were still there, and it didn't take long for her to start subtly promoting it. The opportunity to bring me back there was presented by Sylvie, whose wedding was approaching. Ashley decided to hold it at the vineyard, and this sparked our first argument. When she mentioned it, I flinched and quickly objected. No way, Ash, that's not happening. Darling, don't rush to judgment. It will save us a fortune. We all love that place, especially Sylvie, she adores it. She doesn't know it. She hasn't been there in years, and she had nothing to do with Saskia. Rob, she came and stayed with Grant and me before he died. She adored him, they were close, and she loves the vineyard. What? I growled. She stayed there with you, and Grant. She nodded slowly, unable to meet my gaze. So, where did you sleep when she was there? She reached out and grabbed my hand. Darling, she already knew I was sleeping with Grant. I pulled my hand away. God, could you humiliate me any more? For God's sake, Ash, with our daughter under the same roof. Damn. Rob, she already knew, there was no point in lying. So what the hell, when I told her, she already knew. Darling, she was just upset, she didn't want us to split up. Yet she was fine with seeing her mother sleep with another guy, damn it. Let me tell you this, the damn wedding is not happening there. I don't care how much you scream and shout, it's not, damn it. Rob, you're overreacting. Grant is dead, and the house belongs to us, us and Glenn. It's free, 
It would be fantastic. No way in hell. I told you I'd never set foot there again. I'll start looking for another venue. You'll break her heart if you do that. Yeah, so be it, I don't care. Think about it, Rob. You could lose your daughter forever, do you think it's worth it? Simply put, the answer is, yes. I'm not backing down. This prompted her to start her campaign. First, it was sex, lots of it, while Sylvie tried to change my mind with tears and guilt that Ashley fueled with more sex. When that didn't work, she sided with Sylvie and launched a full-on offensive, but I didn't give in. Slowly but surely, Sylvie came around to my reasoning. I think Clive may have pushed her in that direction as well. In the end, we had the wedding in Marlboro Sounds, and it was incredible. Even Ashley couldn't find fault with it. She tried to pay for it with the money Grant had left, but I angrily refused, and to her credit, Ashley didn't push the issue. After the wedding, everything returned to a normal level, except that I had more work than ever. Ashley became anxious. I suppose she thought I would adopt her way of thinking and move there, but with my business growing day by day and the amount of work I had organized, she could see her dream slipping away. Eventually, she realized it just wasn't going to happen. We tried, we really did, but our hearts were never fully in it. It wasn't the same as before. I think we both even felt the love we shared, but we couldn't make it work. She wanted to live on the vineyard, but since her dream involved me, it didn't happen. Point one evening, I came home from work late and found her packing her things. When my arrival interrupted her, she whispered, I'm sorry, Rob, but this isn't working. I shrugged. I agree, I guess it's not. She flew out the next day, and I'd like to say I missed her, but the truth was that the tension was gone. I could breathe and not worry about saying the wrong thing. Yes, I no longer had the sex and intimacy, or the warm body to cuddle with at night. I pushed her out of my mind. She called occasionally, but in all respects, she was already gone. I focused on the house. I added another project with a huge veranda to maximize the ocean view. I hired an office assistant, a single mother who lived up the road. She had a 14-year-old son. Her husband had left six years ago, abandoning her with the child, and she had been struggling ever since. She turned out to be a great asset in the office. Although I didn't need her full-time, I could tell she needed the money, so I hired her full-time to give her a stable income. When Ruazin had to work late, her son Alec would spend time at my house, and we developed a bit of a relationship. He wasn't dumb, but he struggled in school, so when I saw him doing his homework, I started helping him, tutoring him. Ruazin offered to work overtime for free in exchange for the tutoring, but I was just happy to help. Ruazin was a very attractive woman, 15 years younger than me, so I didn't see any chance of a romantic relationship. I figured there was no way she'd be interested in an old guy like me, especially since I'd become a bit of a workaholic. But I was wrong. One evening, after she worked late and I had helped Alec with some math, I asked if they'd like to stay for dinner. That dinner soon became a regular thing, with all of us taking turns cooking. It wasn't a sudden explosion, but rather a gradual progression. One evening, Alec was away at a friend's house, but Ruazin stayed for dinner anyway, and we had a few drinks. Sitting together on the lounge chair, watching the ocean, turned into kissing, and that led to sex. A beautiful, passionate session of very heated lovemaking. Ruazin and I became a couple. Clive, my son, was the first to meet her when he and his girlfriend Alicia came for the Queen's birthday weekend. They didn't just visit, they came to announce their engagement. It was a fun weekend. The weather was amazing, and Clive and Alicia got along great with Ruazin. They loved the house, and the renovations blew them away. While we were having dinner during the barbecue, Alicia asked. Could we have the wedding here? I laughed. Of course. It would be absolutely perfect. She hugged me. Thank you. 
My parents don't have a lot of money, and I know they've been worrying about how they can afford to pay for our wedding. Nonsense, Alicia, it would be an honor to host it. Clive hugged me tightly. Thanks, Dad. Is it okay if Mom comes? Ashley wasn't impressed when Clive broke the news to her. She kept trying to convince him to have the wedding at the vineyard, offering to pay for everything, but he stood firm in his refusal. After the decision was made, Ruizan and Alicia, who had already become friends, worked out the details. I wasn't surprised when Ashley called me and asked who Ruizan was. When I told her she was my girlfriend, she became very quiet and thoughtful before starting to complain. Rob, she's cut me out of everything. I want to help, but every time I talk to Clive, he says Ruizan has already taken care of it. I have nothing to do. Well, then just relax, come, and enjoy yourself. He's my son, Rob, and I want to help. Just talk to him, let me help or pay for something. After promising to talk to Clive, I hung up and felt her pain. The relationship between Clive and Ashley was strained, and I felt sorry for her. When I talked to him, Clive promised to figure something out. It was harder with Ruazin, she threw herself into everything relentlessly and seemed a bit puzzled when I asked her to include Ashley. She didn't argue with me, but it was clear that she wasn't thrilled about it. The wedding weekend arrived, and Ashley showed up with Sylvie and her husband. They came together and stayed at the same hotel. It felt like a battalion lining up for battle. Ruazin, on her part, had spent hours preparing for their arrival, and I have to say, she looked incredibly sexy. When I introduced them, the tension was palpable, and the claws were out. It was obvious they weren't going to be friends, let alone get along. Sylvie, of course, sided with her mother. The peacekeepers were Clive and Alicia, as their relationship with Ruazin had already solidified. After Ashley arrived, the first evening was rather enjoyable for me. I had offered for her to stay at my place, but she chose to book a hotel instead. When I gave the tour, showing off the new extension and improvements, she entered the master bedroom. I heard her take a deep breath, and I couldn't tell if it was because of the stunning view of the coastline or the fact that there were clothes, mostly Ruazin's lingerie, scattered around, although the bed was made. I saw Ashley flinch, her eyes glued to the sexy black negligee lying on the bed. Yes, it was definitely not something she wanted to see. Ashley hurried quickly out of the room. After the wedding, when Clive and Sylvie had left, I arranged for Ashley to come over for dinner. We had things to discuss. We had a quick meal on the veranda, and it was a perfect evening, the sun setting over the horizon, no wind, just a beautiful, peaceful night. After dinner, she stared at me with a cold gaze. I guess this makes it final, you're not coming back to the vineyard, are you? I laughed. No, Ash, and I never planned to. I regret how things turned out. She nodded. But not as much as I do. Rob, I can't apologize enough for what happened. I know you won't believe me, but I still love you, and I still can't imagine my life without you. Until this weekend, I was hoping you would change your mind, that you'd realize we could still get everything back. It would just take a lot of love to push all of this out of our heads. I was hoping we could fall in love again and live out our days on the vineyard. Ash, I still love you, and I'll always have feelings for you. We shared 25 years of memories and good times, and those will always be with me. The bad news is that we tried, and it didn't work. Yes, but, Rob, we tried here, and this house, it's not for me, it's not for us. Why don't we try at the vineyard? If you could just put your anger aside, move on, and let things take their course. Rob, you liked it there, and you could have done everything your way. Imagine making it your own, that's what Grant wanted. She kept trying until the end. I laughed. It was so absurd. You don't get it, Ash. I don't care about Grant. He was dead to me long before he was buried. But why, why can't we just try? I've moved on. I gave you plenty of chances, Ash.
flesh. I begged you to come home, but you chose him, putting him ahead of me. Now, I have someone in my life, and she means a lot to me. That weekend when I came there, if we had left together, we might have made it through this, but not now. Rob, it was just sex, just six months out of our lives. We could spend the rest of it together. We could grow old together. It wasn't just sex, Ashley, it was the lies. If I hadn't come that weekend, I never would have known. You would have kept me in the dark. I didn't want to hurt you. God, I thought about how to tell you, and Grant begged me to confess, but I didn't want to cause you pain. Well, you were wrong. Sorry, Ashley, but it's over. I have a letter from Grant. Can I give it to you? He wanted you to read it. Tear it up, Ashley. I'll keep it, and I hope that one day you'll be able to forgive us. When you're ready, I'll bring it to you. Keep it to yourself, I don't need it. I'm sorry for everything, Rob. I love you. A little too late, Ash. I wish you the best in life. Thank you for listening until the end. See you in the next episode of Cheating Secrets. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Goodbye.